What's up? This is Altark here from MySmartQuietTrends.com. The MacBook Air M1 is Apple entry-level laptop. Apple redefined their computing power with their own new M1 chip and supercharged them not just with battery, but also ridiculous processing power. It offers super performance that beats higher-end laptops that cost thousands of dollars. But what I'm here for and what you're probably watching this video for is to see how Zwift runs on the MacBook Air with the M1 chip. And if you're not familiar with Zwift, Zwift is a game, an indoor cycling game. It's not a game that you can play with a game controller. You have to have a bike trainer to play Zwift and actually ride a bike and sweat, a real bike or smart stationary bike. Since my last video on the MacBook Pro, I got a lot of questions on how Zwift runs on the MacBook Air. So here we are, this is a MacBook Air. I am six feet deep into the Apple ecosystem and uh, this was actually my son's laptop and he was kind enough to completely give up his laptop for this video. No, actually not just for this video. He wanted a gaming PC instead so he can play the same games his friends play. But leaving all that family drama aside, this is the basic MacBook Air model I have here. It has the Apple's M1 chip with eight core CPU and seven core GPU 8 gigabyte of RAM and two and 256 gigabyte of hard drive. And no fan. No, Apple did not think this laptop needs a fan to cool it down. That's how efficient the M1 chip is. The tests I ran were basically to see what type of frame rate I get using all the different resolution options Zwift offers for this Mac when plugged into power. And also I wanted to see what type of battery performance to expect out of this Mac. And uh, keep in mind, uh, Zwift for Mac is still the Intel version, meaning it does not run natively on Apple's new M1 chip. Zwift is running on Rosetta right now, which is an application compatibility layer designed by Apple to give app developers like Zwift time to redesign their apps to run on the new Apple's uh, M1 chip. However, back in December, Zwift did update the graphic profile for the M1 chip, and now it runs on high profile. That's the level of realism and graphic details you will see on the screen the flowers, the details of dust and shadows. The available graphic profile levels are basic, medium, high, and ultra. So it's only one level down uh, the ultra level uh, you get with Zwift. And this is all running on basically an emulator. The graphic profile is automatically set by Zwift according to your GPU. This is not something you can set yourself. Uh, other integrated GPUs like Apple TV or other iOS devices run on basic or medium profile. Then you have graphic resolutions, which you can set yourself in the Zwift menu. The graphic resolution is different than the graphic profile. The resolution is the number of pixels rendered on the vertical axis. So you have 576 standard definition, 720, 1080p, which is full high definition, ultra 1440 and then you have the full 4k ultra high definition which is 2160. The resolution options you can select are set by Zwift depending on the graphic card or GPU power your PC has. So the maximum resolution the Mac Air gets is ultra 1440. That's one level down from the ultra high definition 4k experience which is really just impressive for an entry-level laptop. Okay, so how did it perform in all these different settings? And before we get there, if you find this video helpful, I would appreciate it if you hit the like button and also consider subscribing to see more content like this. And you can check the graphic profile and frame rate you are getting using Zwiftalyzer.com and I'll link to them in the description below as well. First, let's go through all the resolution options with the laptop plugged into power. In ultra resolution 1440p setting, I got between 35 to 43 frames per second. This is very good. Not the smooth 60 frames per second uh, that you get with a higher end gaming PC, but 43 is decent and looks very smooth. If you are in a big group ride with a lot of riders ex around you, expect the frame rate to drop. That's where I saw 35 frames per second, but riding around or doing a workout, it was averaging 43 frames per second. In high 1080p, high definition resolution, I got between 43 and 49 frames per second, which is again, really good. About 10 frames per second more than the ultra setting, which is expected. And keep in mind, the profile Zwift set for the Mac Air is still the high profile, regardless of the resolution that you pick. That's the level of realism and graphic details that you see on the screen. 
with medium 720p resolution I was getting 50 to 51 frames per second so that's butter smooth from frame rate perspective but the resolution started to look pixelated a little bit not something I would personally use especially if you plan on broadcasting Zwift to a big screen TV the final option is the 576p this is the lowest resolution available and Zwift will look very pixelated but you will get over 50 frames per second not so much of an improvement and I would not recommend this resolution. It's just not the best looking video. On to the battery. The Mac Air has ridiculous battery. I can go two to three days without charging it with normal use. Apple claims up to 18 hours of, uh, for, of battery use on the MacBook Air M1. Zwift has a battery saver option in the setting uh, in the menu when using laptops. This works by capping your frame rate to 15 frames per second on max savings, 20 frames per second on medium, and 30 frames per second on minimum savings when your laptop is unplugged. So let's go through each one of these options and see how the new M1 Air performed. I ran all my battery tests in the 1080p high definition resolution and kept the screen brightness on medium and closed down all other applications. At minimum battery saver, Zwift caps a frame rate to 30 frames per second. The MacBook Air M1 consumed 21% of the battery. And for comparison reason, let's bring in the MacBook Pro M1. And that one consumed only 15% of the battery. And also, let's bring in the 2020 Intel version MacBook Pro. And that one consumed a whopping 75% of the battery. With the medium battery saver on, Zwift will camp the frame rate to 20 frames per second, which is probably the minimum I would go. Still not great, but it is doable. The MacBook Air M1 consumed 19% of the battery, and the MacBook Pro M1 consumed only 13%, and the Intel version MacBook Pro consumed in one hour 41%. With maximum battery saver, the frame rate is capped here at 15 frames per second. Not great on the eyes, but hey, if you have a long workout and no way to plug in your Mac, then good frame rate might not be a priority for you. In one hour, the Mac Air M1 went from 100% charge to 89%. That's only 11%. A similar test with the Mac Pro M1, it went down by 9%. However, when comparing it to the 2020 Intel based Mac Pro, it consumed 37% of the battery. Now with battery saver set to off, meaning Zwift will use all the available GPU power that it can use and there is no frame rate cap. Basically, it will run like it's plugged into power. The MacBook Pro Air M1 in one hour consumed 30% and it was getting 40 to 50 frames per second. The MacBook Pro in this scenario consumed 35%, so about 5% more but I was averaging 56 frames per second on the MacBook Pro. The Intel version battery dropped 83%, so you run the risk of possibly not making it all the way. So depending on how old the battery is in your Intel version, I don't advise running it with the battery saver set to off for anything longer than an hour. Uh, if your Mac is older, I would always keep a power cord around and just be ready to plug it in. Oh, and by the way, the Intel version runs on basic graphic profile. I wanted to do one more test. This is with the Mac Air plugged into an external display, a high definition display like a TV. Uh, I set the profile on ultra, so 1440 and battery saver option to minimum. I'm assuming if you want to plug it into a big screen TV, you want to have a decent picture and frame rates. In one hour, the Mac Air consumed about 35% of battery. So it consumed about 5% more battery when not plugged into an external display with the minimum battery saver option. As far as thermal performance, I did not do any testing on that. There are plenty of other YouTubers who are specialized in that kind of stuff, uh, so you can go and watch them. But if you are worried about it heating up and shutting down midway through a workout because there is no fan on this laptop after all, Here's what I can tell you. I did put it through real life testing and did a bunch of workouts using the Air. The longest workout I've done with the MacBook Air on Zwift was close to two hours, actually an hour and 53 minutes. That was an ultra 1440 and plugged into power. It was warm to the touch, but I never had an issue or noticed any performance issues. So that's all I can tell you about that. If you happen to have the MacBook Air M1 and uh, 
did a longer workout, let me know down in the comments. So overall, just a really impressive laptop. I don't personally Zwift using my laptop, but I have been using my MacBook Pro for all my video editing and other type of work and just super impressed with it. But if you are looking to get a MacBook Pro or an Air for Zwift and other work, you will be very impressed with the results and picture quality. It is just incredible what Apple did here with their ultra low power, ultra low end version of their laptops. Hopefully Zwift will catch up here soon. I am looking forward to see how Zwift perform once they have an Apple Silicon version that is optimized and can take full advantage of the M1 chip. Anyway, let me know if you have any question. I will leave links in the description to Amazon where you can get the same version I have here. Okay, that's all I have. Uh, remember to hit the like button and also subscribe if you've made it this far in this video and have not subscribed yet. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.